<laughs> All right. Okay, now we go. Okay. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the Lost Birds Knitting Podcast. I'm Allison, also known as Lost Birds on Ravelry, uh, Twitter, um, Pinterest, and Lost Birds Fiber on Instagram. And I, hello, my name is Danielle. Um, I am also known as Bright D on Ravelry and Lady D Bright on Instagram. And those are the only two places I am. So far. So far. <laughs> I'm going to say I <clears throat> don't get the privilege of being on social media very often. Yeah, I'm really, actually, I'm sort of, I've joined a lot of social media sites, but in all honesty, I don't like, I don't frequent a lot of them. Although, Instagram is becoming one of my favorites. I there and there are a lot of um, knitters and dyers and fiber artists on Instagram. So it's I I've followed like <laughs> lots of them. And mm. um, and by the way, if you follow me, I'll follow you back. So feel free to find I, me and friend me wherever you can. I do the exact same thing. And um, I have actually um, started following um, the National Parks Foundation. Oh, really? Um, and they have some beautiful landscape photos. Oh, yeah. I, I've started following National Geographic. It's Nat Geo on um, Instagram, and they also have some... I mean, obviously, National Geographic has awesome photographs, so their Instagram's really interesting, too. Um, I think we might have a shorter episode this time. Cross fingers, fingers crossed. Fingers. Um... We didn't do a whole lot this week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of boring this week, I'm afraid. <laughs> As was um, I. But we'll see. Um, What's your flight plan? I, well, so I'm still working on these socks. I have passed the heel, though, so. There you go. I'm going up the leg now. And um, so, yeah, just chugging along on those. And I'm still working on my pendulum as well. <clears throat> a little bit further. You guys can kind of start to see it, maybe. Oh, I feel so bad for you we weaving in all of these ends. I know. It's, I don't think it'll be that terrible. This isn't a huge shawl or anything, and I should just be weaving them in as I go. Because you know me, I like to be done when I'm done, but weaving in ends isn't so bad. Um... So those are my two works in progress. And then I have a finished object. Hey, okay. Which is... Some spinning. Yeah, some spinning. Try and hold it close and get a good shot of it. We're going to have to work on getting more accurate colors, I think, but... Yeah, it's not showing off the purple. Yeah, there. it's showing more blue than anything. But there is some purple and some pink in it as well. Maybe if I hold it back a little, it's more... A little bit of sparkle. Yeah, some sparkle. And um, this was... This was fiber that I dyed myself. It was, um... It, it was two a two-ounce braid of merino, and then I plied it with a two-ounce bat that I had made. Um, so the bat was a whole mix of fibers. It was merino, um... Firestar... Well, ba probably bamboo. Um, I'm trying to look. Um, did I say Angelina? I don't think so. <laughs> you said Firestar though. <laughs> okay, Angelina. Um, I don't know. It was a whole bunch, a whole mix. Now I can't remember, and I didn't write it down. But yeah, I'm happy that it came out came out well. And so yay, finished finished yarn. Except that I haven't bathed it yet, so. Needs a bath. Yeah, it needs a bath. So, anyway, what are you working on? Well, I'm currently working on um, just some uh, stockinette socks from, and the yarn is from uh, Knitter's Nightmare, and the dyer of uh, Knitter's Nightmare is Sadie Blue Ruin um, on Ravelry. And let's see if I'll actually pick up. It actually, you're not seeing the green like it's supposed to be, but. Um, it's really some vibrant colors. Um, I do believe, yeah, the, this is some serious green right there, but it's not coming up. Um, and I believe it's called Mother, Mother of the Universe um, Colorway. Um, 
And I really like her self-striping, so I'm, I might have to find some more of that. And um, then I am also working on the School Dick Cardigan by Hannah Fettig. Um, I actually brought my iPad so everybody can see the actual photo of the cardigan finished and rather than me doing it in pieces. Uh, let's try that. There we go, that's a little bit better. And so I was working on the body and I'm like, I am so sick of doing just the body of this. So I cast on a little bit of a sleeve. Oh, good. And got a little bit of a sleeve done. Just a little bit. So did you ha get new needles then for that? I, I did get new needles. I'm going to talk about that in the mail. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, so. And it's living in... Oh, I'm using... Um, Cashmere DK for the actual yarn uh, made by um, Cascade oh. Yarns. And I have um, a fat squirrel bag here. And I do believe this is her medium bag, but my entire sweater is fitting in this. So. Yeah. that's. I think that's a good size bag. Maybe unless you have a really huge project. I'm going to say, if I add... By the time it's done, I think it needs to be in the that bigger fat squirrel bag that I have. Yeah. And then I'm still working on my derby socks. I got a little bit further. But I'm going to say it's might be time. Um, I had the privilege of pulling out my entire needle because this is my purse knitting. Oh, and, and what, you went to go grab it. And, and it, it was <laughs> like, oh, no. um, I guess that's off course technically. Yeah. Speaking of off course, I dropped my yarn, so it's going to hang out <laughs> down there for a little bit. Um, I have to put that on the side. And, but yeah, um, the... That did not receive as much love as I thought it would. Um, it did get some love though because I had the privilege of hanging out with an ATM for about three hours on Monday. Always fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, that happened. And but that's all I'm working on. Oh, excuse me. It's not all I'm working on. I have one more. Um, I finished yeah. another bobbin of my my C CMV fleece. Uh, CVN. No, yeah, CVN. Thank you. Oh, by the way, a California variegated mutant. Thank you. Somebody yes. looked it up. I didn't look it up. But yeah, and that's not showing, you know, the in-depth of color that this gray actually is. Yeah, it has a few different grays. Very and pretty. I really am enjoying working with it. Um, but yeah. Nice. How much, do you know, like, how many ounces you have spun up so far? Oh, uh, I know it in grams. Oh, okay. Well, how many grams? It's 63 grams. 63 grams. So, is it almost four ounces? Um, 100, 100 there's 28 point something grams in an ounce, so... Oh, uh, yeah, like, and how much did you say? 63? 63, so a little over two ounces. Because there's, <clears throat> yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Because I was nice. like, there's 100 grams in four ounces, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, no, I think 100 grams is like 3.5 ounces. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I should know this, I feel like. But, and I'm not going to look it up. No. You guys can Empirical just, measuring yeah. systems. You guys can just correct us or shout <laughs> at your screen in frustration <laughs> as we make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> what are you going to do, right? I don't know. So, did you go uh, off course besides pulling your needles out of your <laughs> Well, I was actually, socks. before we started, I was showing Allison what I, I did earlier. Um, I was trying to work on my spinning today. And so there's, on your spinning wheel, you have a drive band that actually moves the flyer and, you know, um... It turns the wheel that spins your flyer. There are different, there are 
different um, ways. Up. Yeah, there are different sets up, setups. So the drive band sometimes spins the bobbin directly, and sometimes it spins the flyer. Right. The, the yeah the um the ladybug, the ladybug is, is a is a flyer one. yeah. So and then there's something called scotch tensioning on the ladybug, which will actually it has um. Well, it looks like a piece of twine that goes around the edge of this bobbin right here. Mm -hmm. um, and as you twist that tighter or as you um, loosen it up, it controls how fast the, the yarn gets wound on the bobbin. So I had had a brilliant moment of putting my scotch tensioning on my whirl that controls the flyer. And... <laughs> putting my drive band on the very edge of the bobbin here. And I'm like, why isn't this working? Why does this feel so horrible? And so I finally, like, I'm going to say after a podcast episode. So it must have been anywhere between half hour and 45 minutes of, of spinning. I was like, what the heck is wrong? And just got frustrated. And I then I finally look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, duh. <laughs> One of those moments. <laughs> it's like when you're walking around looking for your sunglasses and they're on your right. head. <laughs> That's kind of probably confusing for people who don't spin or haven't used a spinning wheel. Spinning wheels are hard to envision, like, how they work, I think, unless you've <laughs> used one. So... I'm trying to debate whether I should explain more how they're... How about if you guys are interested, you can leave a, a question in there and I'll explain how a spinning wheel <laughs> works. Or I'm sure there are uh, places online that could provide much better explanations than me. Anyway. Some fantastic YouTube videos and such. Yeah. I, um... I didn't... Did you? I, no, I really didn't because... I didn't really knit a whole lot this uh, week. The only thing that um, happened, I think, I think I already talked about this last week, but when I went to start plying my the yarn that I showed you, mm -hmm. um, I had spun two. I had yeah. spun two bobbins, and um, I went to ply it, and then I realized that I hadn't spun all of the bat. I had spun all of the braid, but I hadn't spun all the bat that I went to um, ply it with. So I started plying it without a full bobbin of the <laughs> bat. Anyway. So did you just like uh, chain ply the the other ones or? No, actually, I, I I'm calling it finished, but actually I, I'm gonna finish um, spinning the rest of that bat, and then it's not very much. I mean. There might be like it's less than half an ounce or or so, so it's not all that much, but yeah, I'm just gonna um spin it, spin the rest of it, and then ply it with the leftover um merino that was on the other bobbin, so I'll just have an extra little mini skein going on for you know maybe toes and heels, yeah, or finishing maybe. If Maybe if the large skein is not enough, I can always attach the mini skein. There you go. Yeah. So other than that, yeah, I didn't. I did pretty good this week. Um, did you do anything else interesting this week? Not in a little in a little cube with a ATM, ATM. <laughs> and a technician. <laughs> yeah. Um. So this week was super stressful for me. Um, no. And. So by the time I got done with work, I legitimately didn't want to think about anything. Yeah. So like, currently my house is still a mess. Um, and from, you know, just living, you know, every day's yeah. activities and such. And so like when I got home, all I did was, you know, I didn't even cook myself dinner. I ate junk food and just <laughs> like went and just chilled out in front of the TV and I legitimately thought to myself, I think, on Thursday night, I go, when's the last time that I sat in front of the TV and did nothing? Like, 
no folding laundry, no knitting, no spinning, etc. And I'm like, I, I legitimately like thought about it for a while. And I'm like, I can't remember. <laughs> Well, you probably overdo them. You need a little <laughs> mental break every once in a while. For sure. I, yeah, I had that kind of a week, though, too. Like, generally, during the week, I do kind of the minimal amount of cleaning anyway. And I, I don't know if this is the best way to do it or to spend your weekend cleaning up. But the week is just, you know, it's busy. And... After you've, you just, days are tiring, and then you don't want to spend your evening cleaning up. So, I do kind of the minimum during the week, and then I usually spend a day on Sunday really cleaning. Um, But, yeah, I didn't get to it this weekend either. Right? Like, there was a mess. There was a couple of days that I didn't leave work until, like, a quarter to six, and... So, like, I felt so bad for my puppy because Aww. she gets stuck in her kennel while I'm home. Aww. And, you know, like, by the time, you know, I'm home, she's like, you better get me to the bathroom as soon as possible. And then you have to feed me Do in you, that order. You keep her in her kennel so she doesn't uh, go on the floor and stuff? Or does she tear stuff up? But she's... Well, she's a yellow lab, and since she's underneath a year old, she has a tendency. She has a chewing fixation. Mm. Um, so she'll try to go after the cat. She'll, like, chew on the furniture or whatever else. Gotcha. Um, like, you can even see, like, inside of her kennel where she's just, like, chewed on her kennel. Aww. And, <laughs> and you're just kind of like... Uh, Don't want to risk it, huh? Yeah, exactly, since, you know, our furniture is not technically our furniture. Yeah. And even yeah. if it were, I suppose you wouldn't want it all chewed up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And the same thing happened when with our um, golden retriever husky mix, who's um, in the States with my parents. Um, he didn't get over his um, his chewing fixation until he was... Almost three. Hmm. So, um, well, we'll just have to wait it out. Yeah. Well, I don't have the same kind of excuse as you because I was just kind of lazy this week. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, you guys, I am obsessed with Outlander. <laughs> so, I only started this series, like, last week, the week before. Yeah, about two weeks ago, and I am just about finishing um, book three right now, and as I mentioned before, these are big books, like, they're really long. (laughs) Oh, I've just been obsessively reading Outlander, and it is good, it's awesome. I like it. You, and you said you've read, how, you've read, like, one and two or something? I've read one, and then got, like, halfway through the second one, and haven't really progressed since then, so I had trouble getting over the the kind of the ending area of book one just because like it kind of traumatized me a little bit but that's okay um (laughs) so i had trouble going forward from there but it's such a good book it's so good oh though that is the one thing that i have to say about it is that nothing can ever go right for these people you know what i'm (laughs) saying how's your luck that bad all the time but anyway, I guess that's also what keeps it interesting. So there's always something happening. There's always action. <laughs> so it's it's fun to read. And um, yeah, it's, it's just good. If you've never uh, read it before, you should definitely check it out. <clears throat> yeah. Um, let's see. I apologize oh. greatly that we are boring. <laughs> I know. I feel so... You know what? You can't be interesting every single week. (laughs) Sometimes you just need a break from all this action. (laughs) No. I don't know. We do have a question this week. Um, It is from the Artsy Knitter, and she says... um, She wants us... Well, okay, she says, Do you have examples of different yarns that you've spun... And what is the most user-friendly book for plying your spinning? 
Um, so I think I wanted to um, mention the question, but <clears throat> I don't think um, Danielle had seen it in time. So right. yeah, so we're gonna um, next week we're gonna bring have examples, examples of our um, yarn to show you guys different different things that we've done. And um, as far as uh, books for applying your yarn go. In all honesty, I um I haven't um I haven't read a lot of spinning books. I sort of I'm more of a YouTuber and you know, I um self-taught sort of thing. Yeah, I'm kind of more of an experimenter, so um I find a lot of my information online and also um just I just experiment. I'm not I'm not a person that I'm not super technical. I would say I um, I I like to experiment and figure things out on my own and you know if it's not the way that everybody else does it well that's okay I'm okay with that I do have um, I do have a book by Ashley Martineau called um, no I don't know I think it's dying and spinning yarn it's a fairly new book um, you know what, I'll, I'll show that next week too. Um, and another book that I want to get, which I haven't yet, is um, Spin Art by J.C. Boggs. She, it's, um, both of those books are more along the lines of art yarn, I would say, <clears throat> or textured yarns. Um, and the, those kinds of techniques. Um, but other than that, I don't have a lot of spinning book suggestions. What about you? Uh, in terms of books, I don't really have any suggestions. I would suggest it for specifically for applying. Um, looking for uh, Judith McKenzie's uh, The Gentle Art of Applying DVD. Um, for me, I'm a, a visual learner, so I have to use the videos. Um, the spin I've, art book, sorry to interrupt, the spin art book also comes with a DVD. Um, something I guess different about my spinning is that with my hands I might be right hand dominant but a lot of my um, uh, small motor skills is in my left hand so uh, like when I'm spinning you normally draft with your most dominant hand so when I'm referring to drafting, I'm referring to, you know, pulling the fiber apart and, you know, allowing the twist to go into that little triangle between, you know, the yarn that's already made and the rest of your fiber, like braid. People normally draft with their most dominant hand. However, with me, I <laughs> hold the braid in my right hand and draft with my left. Um, so a lot of the times, like, I guess it's the same thing for those people who are left-handed. Um, things get a little complicated because it gets backwards. <laughs> so you really when have you're to... looking at books or something exactly. that are trying to explain it to you in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you <clears throat> really have to like concentrate on it. Or um, I learned this when I was um, younger because my sister is uh, left-hand dominant. Um, I put a mirror in front of something that um, I want to see, like a video or something like that. And I pay attention to the mirror versus the actual video. That's a good idea. <laughs> so that's something that we picked up, you know, just through trial and error when, um, with my younger sister. Huh. Oh, um, also the, I showed this last week, I got it in the mail, the Ply Magazine. Um, and the, the latest issue was Twist. And so if you... That is an excellent spinning magazine, and it covers not only spinning techniques and, um, a sp like, it, it gets very technical, uh, and especially this last up, um, issue, Twist, is a lot about plying and <clears throat> um, more technical issues as far as spinning, go spinning goes, and um, so that's an awesome magazine, and you can buy you can buy um, individual issues too. You don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. Although I highly recommend it; it's an awesome, awesome magazine. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, anyway, any other suggestions? Nope, I'll bring some examples next time. Yeah, we'll bring examples of our of our uh, spinning next week. Um, do you have any birds? Who knows? I might have a skein plied up with a fleece. Yeah, of the, the stuff that you um, processed. Mm-hmm. But um, for bird calls, I have um, a, a bird call out to a gentleman named Mark Gunnor. Uh, G-U-N-G-O-R um, and he is actually like a comedian slash marriage, marriage counselor and how I found him um, was because I was <laughs> kind of following all these connections through Facebook because I found somebody who was um, selling you know the, the three steps to talking to women sort of thing going on there <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, I won't give my opinion, but um, it's, you know, kind of starts with, oh, one word starts with a B, the other star word starts with an S. Um, <laughs> um, and, but the, the comedian marriage counselor was hilarious for one. Um, and he has one um, segment on YouTube called the tale of two brains and where he goes into details the differences of males versus women's brains and it's just hilarious for one and two and it just makes a heck of a lot of sense um so if you are ever curious what the hey is going through your husband's mind or your significant other's mind um give this guy a listen you'll get a good laugh and on top of that you might might learn something you should give the example though of the the boxes oh yeah okay so um one of the things that he was talking about or trying to illustrate <clears throat> was a man's mind and how it's a lot of linear thinking so his um illustration was men have boxes for everything so it's um a box for the car the box for the house the box for the money um a, a box for me, a box for the children, or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and when he pulls a box out, he opens the box. He talks about just what is in that box. He closes the box back up, puts it back into its place, making sure that it doesn't cut, touch any other box. And he has a box in his brain that is called the nothing box. There is nothing in the nothing box. So he is able to go there and just relieve stress by going to his nothing box. So when we're with our our women brains, our women brain is just a a bundle of wires and everything is connected. We don't understand the nothing box. <laughs> we do not we don't understand have one. <laughs> the nothing box because we cannot shut our brains off. And everything's connected. <laughs> everything is connected. So when we go over to a man and go, "What you thinking?" <laughs> when he's like. Yeah. <laughs> he's in his nothing box. He, he doesn't know what box. you mean. <laughs> and he is literally thinking about nothing. Yeah. And that kind of drives some women nuts. And I have discovered the, the nothing box quite some time ago. Yeah. With my husband because the um, my husband is a, a big video gamer. So he is... So a video game that he's played, you know, countless times before is Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. He has those maps, the land maps, memorized. Wow. So he is able to play Call of Duty and be in his nothing box at the same time. <laughs> so, okay. so the only time that I know that he is not in his nothing box and playing Call of Duty is when he starts talking to the screen. <laughs> so that's, uh, like, it's it's different for every person, is it? Yeah. Uh, or every guy, I suppose. You know, it might be fly fishing or, you know, whatever else. Something that you have, you can do an activity, but it's something completely and utterly. Oh, uh, gosh. You were getting loved um, on <laughs> Sorry, uh, cat butt. <laughs> so uh, he might be able to do a completely brain dead activity and love it because he is still <laughs> technically in his nothing box. <laughs> Do you need, need help? Oh Do you no, need she's to fine. Disentangle you from 
my cat. She loves you. She loves Danielle, man. Every time Danielle comes over, this is what happens. <clears throat> but anyways, did you have a bird call? I don't really have any bird calls this week, <clears throat> I'm afraid. Um, I do have a mail call, though. Hey! hey. Oh, so, real quick, by the way, yeah. this is the drifting cardigan. Um, I like I that. I can't yeah, remember who it's by. But, um... Uh, with made out of uh knit picks wool of the andes oh really it's, it's a little on the scratchy side but let me tell you it's held up yeah it's no pill- pilling nothing i like the color it's you can't really see it in there it's actually more of like a oh there's a piece of can't hear there yeah it's kind of like a burnt or i don't know red orange they or call like it a, salsa salsa that's a good yeah that's a good description okay and, you know it's kind of heathered Sorry, you have mail call. Okay, yes, I have mail call. Um, so... <sighs> this was, like, a frivolous impulse... Purchase? Yes, but I joined the Paradise Fiber Club. <clears throat> I'm not saying I regret it, but I think if I had the <laughs> chance to make the decision, it, again, I wouldn't do it. <clears throat> not because not worth it or anything like that I just it's not something I really needed to do it was total impulse buy and like I need more fiber and like I need it monthly <laughs> to come in my mailbox however I think at the time what I was thinking is that it would give me a chance to try different fibers because that's part of the p- appeal of their club is that um it it's not necessarily le- it's not like joining an indie dyers club necessarily where you join it for the cool colors and I, I'm sure they have nice fibers as well. I've never been a part of one, so. But I'm, I'm sure the fibers are nice as well. Um, but it's mainly because maybe you like this dyers work, you like their color combinations. Um, this is more, some, some of it's dyed, some of it's not, um, but also there's a wide variety of different fibers that... <clears throat> might be included and so that's really what I wanted to try is different fibers um get outside of my comfort, comfort zone. zone a little bit so um in this shipment I got some Luet medium coopworth roving um this is four ounces and this is like a natural um natural <coughs> fiber. So I've never spun Coopworth before, so it's awesome. It's It feels, um, you know, it's feels like a coarser um, fiber, more like an outerwear type fiber. But I'm looking forward to spinning it. <coughs> it doesn't have it more of a description than that. I'm going to have to look up <coughs> a little bit about it. You know, another book that I really want, do you have this book? Um, Please Fiber Source book. Yes. I have that. Yes. Do you? Yeah. I'll so bring it I over. want that book. Yes. <clears throat> um, this, I also, it also came with Milk Protein Top, which I've been wanting to try for a while. So it's actually made from milk. And it has sort of a soft, it reminds me a lot of um, soy silk. It's kind of, it's a little bit shiny, and it's kind of, um... But it still has, like, the same kind of, like, long consistency yeah. of bamboo. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, it's it's a lot like bamboo or soy silk. Maybe a little bit less shiny than those, but, yeah, it feels super soft. Mm-hmm. And this is undyed, so maybe I'll try, um, dyeing it. And usually you can dye... Plant fibers and things, you have to use different dyes than you do for wool. But um, I think because this is a protein fiber, I think you can dye it the same way as wool. So I'm going to try that out. I'll have to look it up a little bit. Um, I also got some... um, This is Ashland Bay. It's, It's alpaca merino silk. So that's super... That should be super nice to spin. It's really soft. I love anything with a silk blend. It just makes spinning it so nice. It's kind of got a sheen, and I think it should be a nice silky. Yeah, I don't know. 
And it has 30%. It's only, it's 30% merino and basically 70% of non, alpaca and silk are both, um, they don't have the, the springiness. They don't have the crimp like, um, like wool and merino does. So that should be interesting. I think I want to see the texture that I can get from that. I say then, my absolute fiber, favorite fiber to spend is the uh, merino bamboo sil bamboo silk. That just goes through everything like butter. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I bet this might. Well, maybe this will be similar to that as far. Although I bet it would be warmer though with the <clears throat> alpaca. Yeah, the alpaca definitely. Alpaca is warmer than wool, <clears throat> based upon the th uh, the hair consistency because the the hair of alpaca is hollow versus the wool, which is, so it has, uh, the alpaca has the ability to have more air in it, so mm -hmm. it holds body heat better. Right. And then this is, um, this is something called uh, soft silk. <clears throat> it's made by Camage Fiber Arts. It's, um, I've heard of it before and I've always been interested in trying it. I, I, it's it's mulberry silk and it's I'm not really sure. It feels See, like cotton candy. Yeah, it does. It's super soft and really nice. So before I I had seen it, I thought it was more like um like silk waste, like noir or something. Mm. Um but this is not I feel like these are longer fibers than that. I apologize. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm gonna blend this up. I think with something else and see how it see how it goes. But it's really beautiful and super soft. And of course, silk is awesome, no matter what. And then they sent like this little um, this little fold up bag. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah so cool. It, it folds up into this uh, little pod here. But when you unfold it, it's, it's like a nice little tote bag. Which is super, super helpful because uh, mm -hmm. um, if you shop out in town, they will normally charge you for using a plastic bag. Yeah, I always carry like a little bag like this in my purse. And these are nice because they, it folds up into its own little pouch, so it's not just wadded in your bag or something. Let's see, this is called a flip and tumble reusable bag. Patent pending. Holds 35 pounds. No slip shoulder strap. Are you going to test that whole 35 poundage thing? Probably. I mean, I could, I think I Put some fruits in Yeah, vegetable. watermelon or something in there. You're going to have That'd 30, be a really big watermelon. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have a 35 <laughs> pound watermelon. You better be having a giant barbecue. On second thought, maybe I, I don't know that I could fit 35 pounds in this bag. Maybe I could. So it depends on what you're trying to carry. Mm -hmm. Lead shot? I don't know. <laughs> Just pile in some bricks or something. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, I was, um, so I was sort of, I was sort of regretting the <laughs> joining this club because I don't really need to join the, I didn't need to the, join this club at all. Um, <laughs> but now that I got my first shipment, these these things that I got are all kind of things that I've wanted to try anyway, so I'm really excited that um, it's such a good variety of different fibers. So Sorry. I'm whistling at everybody. <laughs> That's all good. Did you get something in the mail? I did, yes. So I have a new Haya Haya set, and apparently my cat decided to make a bed on it. <laughs> so I have the new Haya Haya interchangeable set. It comes in a pretty um, case. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I was really that happy came with, with it, it though. Yeah, the case. The, yeah, nice. I was really happy with the color that the, of the case because I guess I'm not a very big pink person. Mm -hmm. Though I'm trying to break out of that, truthfully. Um, so, but at the same time, I don't like having things on my uh, that are pink. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anyways, moving on. <laughs> um, so this is, I just, uh, I, as soon as I got these, I picked these up on Saturday and busted this out. Um, 
And these are four inch needle tips. And the kit comes with, um, or the, the set is uh, US size two to US size eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Um, and it's, like I said, four inch needle tips. And I am a, a person who enjoys the steel or the nickel plated. Um, I love, 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 love the fact that these twist at the... Your cord, you mean? The, yeah. Yeah, the, it, yeah, it twists at the joint here. And it does a pretty good job of, you know, sliding through. Um, but the... And I also like the fact that this little, tiny little hole, I don't know if you can see this. No. Um, there's a, a lifeline hole. Mm. So you can knit, knit your knit lifeline, lifeline in. into the... Um, as you're going versus, you know, having to go back with mm -hmm. a, a needle and, you know, picking your way through. Um, I thoroughly am enjoying the smaller needle tips than what I'm, I used to oh, really? eat, you know, have with um, the knit picks. But then again, I have smaller hands, so. Yeah. You know, kind of like those people who have larger hands might be having some trouble just because it, your hand would rest exactly where the join was. Yeah. I like the I like the longer needles, but I I don't have big hands, but I tend to like use my whole hand on the needle. Mm. You know, I don't just use my fingers. I have like my whole hand wrapped around the needle, so. <clears throat> but those I do I love the um the I've never tried Haya Haya's, but I um, like the fact that they have the, you know, the flexible, or not flexible. The, the spinning joint? Spinning joint, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the only, the, I really like the Haya Haya double points, so I assumed, though it is mm -hmm. dangerous to assume sometimes, um, that I would like the, the interchangeables. Um, but it came with uh, four different size, uh, sizes of cables. So I have the 16 inch or the 40 centime centimeters, the 32 inch or the 80 centimeters, the 40 inch or the 100 centimeters, but the, the one I'm currently using is the 24 inch or the 60 centimeters. Um, so that I, I, you know, I've only been using it, you know, one day, so. But I recommend it so far. So where did you order those from? Just from Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. Can I ask how much they were? They were seventy four. Oh, that's that's not too bad. And they really truthfully like, I, you know, you start off with you know something simple like the knit picks, which is what I have is the knit picks. I think I paid. Set. Yeah, I think I paid more for my knit picks interchangeable set. Although, how many um, sizes does that come with? Two to eight. Two to eight, okay. Yeah, so six. So it's eight, a six. less, it's a lesser range, I think. Than, right. Well, the although mid maybe picks goes from four to eleven. Right. So maybe, it, maybe it's not that much less of a range. It just starts smaller. Mm-hmm. And since mm -hmm. I, I use twos for a lot of different things. So. Yeah, two. I, I ordered extra. The, um, Knit Picks doesn't have interchangeable needles in their smaller sizes like that. You have to buy the fixed circulars, so. Yeah. Which is fine. Okay. I'm enjoying those so far, and they're pretty. Yeah. Yeah, those are really nice. I might have to try them out. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Nothing from me. All right, I think I'm done, too. Oh my gosh, surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Less than an hour! How is that even possible? Um, it still went pretty long, considering we didn't even have that much to say. <laughs> or I didn't have that much to say, anyway. Um, so, yeah! Happy birthday! Short episode. Um, we will happy talk... Happy birthday. Happy birthday, like this is our gift to you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll talk to you guys again next week. Thank you. Have a good week. Bye-bye.